Festive month? Festive month. Welcome Kirby to the chat room. How are you doing, buddy? Kirby's in the chat room, he's first. Yo, yo. When I start the stream, I gotta make sure I turn off the autoplay because it will tend to mess me up. All right, going live on Facebook. Oh, make sure to tune into this brand new intro we got. Yeah, so one of the cool things when you're planning out projects and stuff, um, when you make an easy project, you allocate time for other things. So in this, this week is a great example of it, making an easy project so that I can work on something else. So I finally hunkered down and spent some quality time with After Effects, which is a uh, graphics, motion graphics editing software. So I put together a new intro. Uh, it's kind of like the old intro, but there's just more elements and stuff that kind of depict what we do. And I'm pretty happy with it. Um, definitely put a lot of time into it. It's like a day or so. A lot of uh, keyframing. Yeah, Adobe. They just updated their pricing stuff, so now we gotta pay yeah, more. Yeah, a lot of news coming out about that. Yeah. I don't know what the updates are, except that they now They're charge more money. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Adobe, you can't own their software. You can only rent it. You can only use it. We got about a minute left. Hello, mm -hmm. everybody in the chat room. Teleputer is in the chat room. Olansky is hanging out. Jim Scuba, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, me too. Fingers crossed that there are no audio issues. Uh, one of the reasons why that happens is there's this little, there's this little setting I forget to turn off in, in Wirecast. It's called uh, auto swap, and it'll swap the two frames, the two scenes, um, which is weird. I don't know why that setting is there, but I made sure it's not on. Sweet, Juana Duino is saying thanks for doing it. I'm back to learn. Yeah, we got some cool stuff. Hello, everybody. Hello, Hello Trent. From Thailand. Hello, Shay. Thank you guys for joining us. Happy Wednesday. It is the morning over here in the States. And we're ready to go live. You guys ready for this intro? Um, hmm. What? This overhead. Oh, you like it? <laughs> I mean, it's showing my laptop. <laughs> oh, you want me to move it? Yeah, you can move it. That's, you can see right there. See, there's enough room. That's good. We should have we should have got another one of these, <laughs> just so that you can put your laptop there. That would have worked. Oh man, let's put like this. Okay, this is set up wrong. It is. Um, the problem is it doesn't extend out. That's why I put it there. Mm. Yeah, because that's right in my face. Mm -hmm. You want to move the whole table up? How's that? Mm -hmm. This is live, ladies and gentlemen. We are, we are readjusting our camera, our overhead camera. It's on a little tripod uh, better. mic stand. That's way better. <laughs> Set your faces in the sun. That was great. All right, you, you ready? Let's go. All right, you ready for this new intro? All right, guys, watch. Carefully, don't blink or you'll miss something. Here we go. I gotta make sure to turn my audio off and then turn it back on, okay? Here we go. And there we go, that's the new intro. Hope you guys like it. Huge shout out to Colin Cunningham for putting that track together. Um, that music is from Colin. And uh, we worked on the After Effects stuff. So as you saw, there's a lot of new iconic elements in there. Coffee, a little clock, a transistor. I had to learn how the transistor, like how the, the, the electrons actually flow through the transistor. That was, that was fun. Yeah, the Adabot at the end was fun. 
<laughs> Yay, thank you guys. Oh man, it's, it's fun to like work on something a lot and then like release it and everybody mm -hmm. gets to see it. Everybody, welcome to the show. It's 3D Hangouts. I'm Noed, designer here at Adafruit. Joining me every week is Mr. Pedro. What's going on, everybody? I'm Pedro Rez, creative tech here at Adafruit. And every week we come to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This is a show where we combine 3D printing, DIY electronics, smash them together, and make inspirational projects like these skulls here. These fine, lovely skulls. Welcome, everybody, in the chat room. We are live streaming on all the networks. And let's go ahead and start with paying some bills. My favorite thing. Make Mist is today's coupon code. You can use this at checkout to get 10% off your order. Use Make Mist and pick up some stuff for Halloween, maybe. We have those free deals going on throughout the, while well, supplies last, I guess. I don't know when this ends, but it started not too long ago. So you can check out adafruit.com slash free for all the details, which I will do right now. Adafruit.com slash free. You get different tiers, 100 bucks, 150, 200, 250, and 300. Um, these are only uh, applicable to the online store, so not any distributors. Sorry about that, but um, this, is a, this is the deal that we got going on. So check it out if you want more detail. Again, adafruit.com slash free. Again, you can get coupon codes on that as well, or 10% off on that order as well. So make a mist. We also have some stuff going on as always indefinitely, like same day delivery in New York City. That's a really fun option. We have the Adafruit Daily newsletters. It's a daily newsletter. You have to subscribe to that. Go to adafruitdaily.com, subscribe to that. News, adafruit.com slash newsletter. You can get product specific once a week stuff. That's a fun one. Discord, we're on Discord right now, so you can check it out. Um, a lot of great chats going on, conversations going on. We have a weekly um, CircuitPython meeting that happens every week on a Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, I forget the time. Do you remember the time? Uh, I think it's around 12 or 1 uh, ET. ET, okay. But it is recorded and you can catch the playback on YouTube. Right. Check those out every Monday. <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading Jim's fun fact. Mist is poop in, in German. <laughs> Today's code is make poop. <laughs> it's like Kirby got all of his freebies. That definitely works, uh, uh, handing out freebies for orders. Yeah. Sorry, thanks to steer that conversation. So let's talk about this week's project. We're just gonna jump right into it. It's it's right here. It's it's kind of hard to see the the, the circuit Python powered circuit playground board in there, but it's there. We got a lot of lights in the studio, so you can kind of see it. It looks really really great in low light. Uh, we also have its little friend skull here, which is our time lapse Tuesday project. So let's go ahead and jump into it. I did make a guide for this, um, which is you can find it at learn.adafruit.com. This is the guide. Um, so this is cool. So I picked up this Mist Maker with not too much. I didn't really think too much about it. I was like, oh, that'd be fun. Let me play around with it. I got it at my local Halloween shop for 20 bucks. You can get it for like 10 bucks uh, from fine places like Amazon. It comes with a couple LEDs, but it doesn't really light up the whole skull or whatever you're going to put it into. And originally I put it into one of these cheap cauldrons and that was a lot of fun. And I figured, hey, this is cool. And then Pedro did some shopping at Target and found this giant skull, right? This guy here. And he was like, dude, maybe we can put the, the thing inside here. And it's a big skull. It's bigger than a head. And he saw that it's, it looked like it was fully solid. But then he saw the screws in the back and was like, oh, dude, you can probably take this apart. And when I did, it was, I was really impressed with the construction of this thing. They like... It designed it very well. So there's a lot of room inside here for all sorts of different electronics. So you can stick speakers, batteries, lights, um, pretty much all the things that, are, that you can find in your typical expensive Halloween prop that already has electronics in it. So I think it's a really cool example of showcasing how you can get like a cheap $10 prop and make it into like a $100 prop with electronics. Uh, and really like the kind of fun hero, pro the hero item of this is really the mist maker which is like a, uh, a, basically a humidifier, right? There's different types of humidifier. This is like a cool mist humidifier and all it needs is water. You don't need um, special liquid to make it work. And uh, it's pretty nice. One thing I didn't talk about in the video, if you didn't see it, um, is this little guy here. This is a uh, deflector. And if you look carefully in the shots, you'll notice that there's like water droplets around the table where it's sitting. 
and that's because I didn't install this guy. This is a little piece of plastic that basically goes over uh, the, um, the ultrasonic unit and it's, it basically deflects the water. So the water shoots out of the little ceramic uh, diaphragm thing there. And this just kind of deflects the water so it stays inside the skull. It's fairly large, it's supposed to be a candy bowl. So I'm, I'm pretty happy that uh, it's deep enough and you can submerge water. And Pedro had a pretty cool idea where we could probably 3D print a mesh and make it still a candy bowl so you can get your hand in there. Um, but I don't know, it's, it's something that is kind of outside of the scope of the easiness to the project. So if any of you guys have uh, some cool ideas, definitely um, do it. <laughs> I, I was actually, I was so tempted to put NeoPixel LEDs in the eyes here, but I just ran out of time and I was like, you know what, this is going to be good enough. And the whole point is to have this kind of easy to make project uh, that you can put together in like, I don't know, 10 minutes or something, depending on your time. Mm -hmm. uh, but that is kind of the, the project in a nutshell. Again, going back to the guide, I just kind of outlined some things that you want to have, you know, hot glue, screwdriver, hobby knife, very, very crafty type projects. Definitely a Dremel with a cutoff wheel if you have one. If not, you can just use a, a like I said, an X-Acto knife because it's kind of this, I guess it's ABS plastic, could be something else, but it's pretty malleable and you can kind of cut it freely. It's not too thin. You mean, okay. it's not too thick. It's not too thick. Yeah, or oh, it's not too thin, like the cauldron. Those are really cheap. So this one's not too cheap. And it's got a good paint job. So the circuit play, uh, playground, um, kind of piggybacking off of uh, a, a guide that I released earlier this week, uh, which is this right here, is our, 3D print, our new 3D printed cases for the circuit playground. So I used the circle one, and there's some different types of shapes. This houses a 500 milliamp battery, so it's like this contained all in one unit. Uh, the only update that I did from last week was I made it instead of a twisty top, it's now a snap fit top because it's much better because I couldn't fit the, when you twisted it, it would kind of cut the, it would kind of get in the way of the wire, the battery cable. So um, I made sure to make it that instead. So obviously there's some settings and stuff like that. You do want to, if you do want to put a battery inside your circuit playground case, I definitely recommend making your own DIY slide switch adapter. That's basically a little switch that is, uh, in line with the power connection for a male and a female JST connector to kind of make this little switch that you can break um, the power connection from your feather or your circuit playground in this case. So I have this guide here that I did a couple of months ago. So uh, it's just kind of, it's like a guide that kind of piggybacks off of two different guides. So this one and then this one. But check it out. I hope you guys 3D print it. If you do have access to a 3D print, if you don't, uh, check out 3D Hubs or Shapeways, find your local maker spaces if you want to get these printed for you. You can order it from our uh, Thingiverse page, I believe. It's like a one-click deal, sort of. So check that out, again, if you don't have a 3D printer. Uh, the assembly for this is very straightforward. Take apart this, the, the skull, there's like six screws in the back, you take them out, and they're kind of sunk, so you need like a long screwdriver. And you, you kind of want to figure out the best placement for the cable to come out of the, the skull, the, the candy bowl, because uh, it is four pieces. There's the front, the back, the bottom cover, which we don't need, and the candy bowl. And there, it's kind of neat. There's these little, there's like a flange, like a lip on the outer side of the candy bowl. And that slides into these little grooves on the, on the two uh, faces, the back face and the front of the skull and then the, uh, the bottom kind of sandwiches in there. Uh, so you, got to, you want to mark it, make a hole with a Dremel, make a pilot hole, and then make sure that the hole is big enough to fit the power adapter, which it comes with a 12 volt power, power adapter, um, and a plunger, which you want to make sure your hole is big enough for. So you gotta do a couple test fittings. The first time I did it, um, well, the first attempt I did, I didn't use hot glue started leaking, so I added hot glue and, and figured, hey, you probably want to do this. So, you know, make some hot glue, watertight seal to make sure you don't get any water because it starts dripping, you're going to get it onto their table or even worse, your circuit playground. Uh, I was interested, it was interesting that, like, I needed a way to secure the humidifier to the candy bowl itself. So I was like, I'll just use, I'll just use mounting tack, that'll work. And it did. It works underwater, which is, which is funny because it's like a, it's kind of like a molding putty that I didn't know works in water, so now I know. Hey, it works pretty well in water. 
Um, so that helps secure the humidifier to the candy bowl so it's not floating around. And then you want to put it back together. I made this notch in the back uh, using the Dremel again. And uh, that helps you so it doesn't kink the power cable. And you probably want to do the same thing. So um, to give it a little bit of strain relief, I added some hot glue to that so it's not kind of uh, moving around. So just make sure that your uh, your humidifier is in a good spot before you glue that down because I had to kind of do that twice. <laughs> so how much water do you add? Well, the deflector has a little minimum max meter, but you just want to submerge it right until it kind of starts getting to the top of the humidifier. Um, that's where you want to stop, um, which is what I found works best. And as soon as you power it on, uh, the, the mist maker, uh, it, it, it starts fogging instantly. So you know it's, you got enough water when like the, when this fog starts coming out, or the mist. Uh, and again, uh, you do want to install that deflector. I think some of the ones on Amazon don't come with one because I saw like the reviews and they were like, hey, this spews water all over the place. If you have a deep enough candy bowl, it probably won't, but hey, I, I recommend installing it. So that's the project in a nutshell. Uh, again, super easy to do. I think it's a good, if you're like an educator or you're having an event or something, you have a lot of young kids and stuff and you want to teach them a little bit about science, um, hey, this is a good opportunity to teach them how the humidifier works. Um, yeah, and lights. <laughs> so it's kind of a fun one, very easy. And uh, I hope you guys do something to make it even better, kind of work off of this concept of like lights and mist. So there you go. <coughs> So there's a ton of things that you can actually add to this. One of those uh, came to our attention on the forums. If you pull that link up, adding very cool little LED matrix eyes inside of here with yes. a Trinket M0. Yes. Let's go to that real quick here. So this was fun. This was brought to our attention by PT and Lamar. And this is actually in the eight different forms. So check this out. This is from user Kmodicha. And basically he, he is using our OLED display in a Trinket M0 to make these super cool eyes, these spooky eyes uh, for their Halloween pumpkin. So you can see here a video of, um, of, uh, t of the father-daughter team putting this together. So pretty cool, check it out. I'll have the link of this video linked below and also the form so you can get the code and stuff. But Super cool. It's pretty cool, yeah. So you can imagine putting using the, that uh, that circuit and putting the displays inside the eyes. I think there's enough room in there. Mm -hmm. Maybe putting it in epoxy to waterproof it or something like that. Yeah, because lots you, of cool things right. you can do to it. <clears throat> the cool thing about this one is that you can take the face off as it splits, mm -hmm. and then you can get easy access to it. Yeah. So you yeah, don't the have bowl to kind comes of, all the way out. Yeah, and you have easier access. So very to the cool. Eyes. Thank you so much for sharing this and. We'll have it linked below, and I think we got them to be, we, they agreed to come on the show and tell tonight. Oh, so yeah, hopefully we'll yeah, see yeah. it live and talk a little bit more about the circuit and maybe the code. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's going to be a lot of fun. So nice. check that out. Huge thanks uh, to Team K Mocha, or K Moto Cha. <laughs> Sorry. And um, that, was, that was a lot of fun. So that's one of the things that you can do to this, mm -hmm. to this type of thing. I also linked to this. Um, but you can find it on Target. I think I, Walmart I sells to it. it too. I linked to it. It's about eight bucks, eight fifty. Yeah, it's on sale right now, and they even have some really cool ideas for others, like this candy bowl here what? with an eye already send me on the that bottom. That's cool. Address. I don't know how you would send it to me. Um, anyway, we'll uh, we'll have to look at it later. Here, I'll put it in the uh, chat, but you won't. You can't copy it. Oh yeah, me, I can. can you? I think I can. Let's see. This one looks pretty cool. 20 bucks. It looks like it's using that same eye, uh, little eye motor thing that we got for the doorbells. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that was a fun one. I don't know if it moves, but it kind of looks like it does in the photos. Wow. I didn't actually click inside That's cool. I think that is the exact same eye thing. Mm -hmm. That is so funny. It's like the same paint and everything. Yeah. That is super cool. So another type of idea. Looks like it's pretty easy to, to model as well. Man, these Halloween like props are just getting thing. way cooler every year. Like the amount of stuff that, that mm -hmm. uh, manufacturers are coming up with is really cool. So this is neat. <laughs> Target's got like all the cool stuff. So check it out. Um, 
<laughs> Again, a good, a good idea is to kind of take existing cheap Halloween props. And that's only 21 bucks, yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. Cheap Halloween props, add some more electronics to it, yeah. make it super awesome. Yeah, and Kirby's saying that it looks like the same one that they also have inside of the globe. It is. They have a target. Oh, another globe? Or the, the, there's a globe? Or are you talking about the, that's what the he doorbell? Said, okay. Well, anyway, super cool. Also inside the doorbell. We have all this stuff linked. The humidifier and the skull is all linked. So you can check those out in the, in the learning guide. And definitely try making those 3D printed cases for your circuit, pi uh, your circuit playground. Um, I'm curious to see how well it works out uh, in the wild. I only tested it with two printers here uh, out of like 10 of them. So I've got a little bit of more testing to do, but I think they, they're pretty good. Yeah, they're pretty good. Yes, he is confirming it is a globe and also the doorbell <laughs> that they've used this in. Sweet. Nice little reusable circuit there. Awesome. Yeah, the ball and I are pretty cool. Sweet, I didn't see those. Did you see those? I did not see yeah. those. It must be an online only thing, maybe? Uh, maybe per location or something, yeah. Per location, yeah. yeah. All cool right, cool. Stuff. Let's go ahead and jump into this week's... What are you working uh, on? What are we working on? All right. Is this Pedro's turn? So, I'm working on a cool little MP3 player. It's feather-based on the design from our very own Cardle, Carter Nelson, yeah. who uh, cooked up the, the circuit and the uh, program for this. So a simple little case, it's based on the uh, Gordon Cole uh, hearing aid from Twin Peaks. Yes. Uh, so it's a nice, slim little design, have all of the port openings for USB, wearable, headphone, wearable uh, player. SD card, and uh, the little slide switch, and the volume knob on the top here, have a little status indicator right here. And like I said before, it is a Feather M0 Express with the Music Maker wing on top of here. A little SD card and all of the uh, pause, play, and then the next squishy buttons are on the side here. Yeah, our 10 millimeter, eight millimeter soft buttons in mm -hmm. use here. Yeah, we're using the cool little technique for doing the nub snap uh, fit yes. little lid on there. And we will talk more about this next week and go over the design. Lots of cool little um, uh, features that are inside here to hold a bunch of the components in there. Yeah. And some new techniques for simplifying the way that you actually make the little snap together. Yeah, nub. every time we tend to like work and collaborate, we find more simpler ways to do something that would either ways take like 10 steps. You can mm -hmm. do it in like three. Yeah, yeah. So it's always fun uh, learning uh, how to just to make a, a process that takes normally a lot of steps into the minimum steps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Fusion is always changing their workflow as well. So as that um, yeah, happens. Yeah, like, hey, you can now do shells on, on exactly, complicated yeah. geometry, for example. Yeah, yeah. So this is actually, I like how much smaller this is than actually their little charge Yeah, a little well. bit chunky, but that's, you know, you can make it thinner if you want, but oh, it, it, ha it accommodates enough room for the battery and the stacked headers. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah, so we'll go over the shorter stacked headers, the way that uh, um, those are being put together, the way that yeah. the mounting and assembly for all of this is. Mm -hmm. We'll take a look at that next week. And huge shout out to uh, Carter Nelson for yeah. putting uh, this cool circuit together. Mm -hmm. Cool, nice theme. I've never watched Twin Peaks, so I have yeah, we have no idea we about it. Over the, the, the subscription to yeah, we were Showtime. actually yeah during the meeting we were actually thinking of redesigning this as uh, like a Walkman, Walkman. Yeah, but Colin um, was like, no, there's a lot of people who like Twin Peaks, so maybe stick with that one. Yeah, <laughs> so, so it's a cool little design it. and like mm -hmm. the way that the uh, the pattern for this is. So we'll take a look at that next week. Super cool. All right, sweet. Thanks for that. Oh, there's one. Two, one uh, addition that you added to the Circa Playground case. Yeah, so case. here's the scenario, right? Let's say we've been using this, you know, all night and we're, we're ready to turn it off and we're ready to um, put it away. Well, there is a battery in there, but, you know, typically you would have to take this out and take out the battery and recharge the battery, right? When the battery gets low. Well, wouldn't it be awesome if you could just you know, charge it. So this is last week's project, the Pedro's portable Qi charger. It has a Qi transmitter on the inside. What if you could just put it right here and charge the circuit playground? You can notice that a little red LED popped up in there. And that is our micro LiPo USB charger, but it's not connected. It's, 
How is this working? Well, remember we talked about the wireless um, receiver module? This one over here? That is what's inside the circuit. It's underneath the circuit playground, this little guy here. So it's a $15 module, and you can basically add this to any of your embedded Arduino projects. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even have to be embedded. In this case, it actually makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So inside here, we'll pop the cover off. You can't even really see it, but you see that kind of gold area there. That is uh, a little bit of the flex PCB uh, from the, the receiver. So it has a little bit of a black um, padding that has a little bit of uh, It's adhesion. basically wood it's sticking to. Yeah, it's a sticky pad, right? Mm -hmm. So I just stuck it in, in the center right on top of the battery and it tends to work okay. Now, I don't think there's much heat. There's a little bit of heat, but it doesn't get like hot anything to where that's anything will melt. Yeah, especially generate. the PLA, it won't melt or anything. So it works pretty well. Now, in there, it's, it's right underneath the circuit playground, and that is the micro USB LiPo uh, charger, which is this guy over here. You get a visual of it, better look at it, whoops. So that is a $7 little charger, and this is basically meant to recharge our a wide assortment of LiPo batteries, the 3.7 volt ones that we have. And these, uh, you know, you recharge them, it has a little status LED, it's red when it's charging, it's green when it's done, and it gives you five volts out. And it has an extra bat pin and a ground, and two grounds, I believe. So the way I'm able to turn off the circuit playground is with that DIY JST adapter, which I have in there. You can see there's the switch, it's wired into the circuit, uh, the circuit playground, and then the other side is wired into the battery here. So I can turn it on and off without having to. I mean, you can also turn it on and recharge the battery as well. See, it starts charging. It takes a second or two, um, but it is charging. Mm -hmm. I believe the charging rate is somewhere between 100 and 500 milliamps. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Something like that. You can look at the data sheet. Or the product page to yeah, right on the product exactly sheet. Exactly where on the product page actually. Yeah, but we shows haven't used this. this in a project. Is that right? We haven't used it in a project yet. So Erin St. Blaine has used this when she right. did some resin casting on some jewelry before, yeah. so and that is the most useful yeah. place to have this because you can't really get to the port. You don't want a port exposed if you're going in the water. She does all like a lot of mermaid cosplay uh, in the water. And that's the uh, I think she used a best different one. place she used to this actually one. use that. She used this one. This is a different one. Um, it's still the same type of, you know, use case. Uh, hmm. I kind of saw it was in one of these. It is. Yeah. It, there's, there's, Becky put it in a purse, and here it is. Oh, there it is. The, the Galaxy, Galaxy pendant. pendant. Yeah. So now one question is like, well, what's the difference between these inductive charging sets and the universal charging one, this one here? From what I can gather is it has a little bit more smart, so it gives you consistent um, charging rate. You notice it took a little bit to charge just because it's kind of like amping up and uh, giving you a consistent five volts out. So it's got some smarts embedded on that circuit, P on that circuit uh, flexible PCB. So it's definitely, I think, a better option than uh, this little guy. Just, just from like a efficient power efficiency standpoint. There are some circuitry on it though. So you got different options. Maybe this is for a, a more smaller type of project or more smaller embedded thing. Because this almost did not fit in the case. I had to kind of shave off a little bit of this black sticky pad. So just be careful when you're installing it. But hey, I'm going to turn this into a project, as I think it'd be a useful thing for people uh, to know how to wire this up. But yeah, it all fits in there nicely. And uh, you can recharge stuff wirelessly now, which is really cool. It works really well with Pedro's last week's project. So check it out. I like it. I think, I think we'll be, whoops, it's right there. I think we'll be looking at more useful ways to integrate wireless charging into our projects. So something to think about and something to, to know, to have in your arsenal that uh, you know how to do this and it, it makes sense in certain types of scenarios. Is that cool? Super cool, yeah, yeah. He's been around for quite a while. Yeah, we've had them for a while. Reference. Definitely watch uh, <laughs> Lamar's um, video on it as she talks more depth about it. Every one of our products has an embedded video so you can watch uh, Lamar talk about it and uh, she showcases it working with uh, just recharging a battery wirelessly. But it works really, really well. So she talks about it for a little bit here. 
Pretty cool. What does she power with it? It's just the battery, right? Mm -hmm. Like just recharging it, yeah. So it's pretty easy to wire up. Yeah. Very nice. It's a good general size for like most things. So the Circuit Python, the Circuit Playground is a good example of it. So check it out. If you want to pick it up, you can get 10% off your order with Mist Make. Make Mist. Mist Make Maker. Mist. Yeah. All right, moving on to this week's uh, Community Makes. Yeah, let's hop over to the Community Makes. This week we had a very fun Time Lapse Tuesday project. And let's go ahead and take a look at it. Let's watch the video. Sorry about that. Let's watch the video. <laughs> so this is a fun video. Please check it out if you haven't already. That is the skull. This is from uh, Kimbolt, Thingiverse user Kimbolt. We did download off Thingiverse and we made it as a remix. So Pedro shelled it out and added two little holes, two big holes rather, for these 10 millimeter LEDs. We are using the 12 millimeter coin cell breakout to power these two LEDs. They fit in the eyes very well. Um, so you'll have to wire them up manually, of course. So um, one of the cool things that you can do to make it easier is to wire it in a Y formation so that you can wire up the two LEDs um, to each other and then the power and ground can go into the switch. So you only have one power and one ground going into the breakout. And then the breakout itself can be hot glued to the inside of the mouth. So it works pretty well. Um, it's just friction fitted. I didn't hot glue so the eyes can still come out. And this is really awesome. I'm actually using the Mist Maker in, the, in a lot of these shots because it's just mm -hmm. a lot of fun to do it. I didn't have it in the skull yet, so you could probably put these two projects together, have LED eyes and, and spewing smoke. Yeah, definitely this is add a lot of cool. some atmosphere with all that smoke. It's so cool, yeah. <laughs> oh, and one more thing that we're adding there too is that uh, black light with the little motor that's yeah. uh, adding yeah, that Yeah, these texture. things are all in every, you can find these probably in every shop, these mm -hmm. little black lights that plug into that. We actually showed it last week where I made a 3D printed tripod thing for it, adapter. Mm -hmm. So that was the light that we're using. Um, very easy circuit. Um, a little bit harder to put together than the, the, the skull one because you, you do have to solder it. Yeah, it's a little bit cramped in there, so you do have to sort of do some maneuvering to get all yeah. the wires around there. Yeah, let's take a look inside just to get a better look at it. So I used a 1.4 millimeter shell on this inside of a mesh mixer, and I didn't use any support materials on this. This is fun. And you can so, see this all over the cheeks, right here where the eye socket would be. We just cut all that out. Yeah. We thought it would make, add a little bit more character, especially for Halloween type things. A perfectionist it, would be like, this is garbage and throw it away. But no, it's no, definitely it's usable. Good. It's definitely yeah. an okay print. So we're using the PLA PHA glow in the dark from ColorFab that we have in the shop. So yes. with a black light or UV light, I have one. grab that. It is just like radioactive. Radioactive. Yeah, it looks too really bright. <laughs> Hold on, if you go on the inside though. Too bright. And then if I cut it, oh, I uh, can't see the glow. Yeah. Ah. It's too hard. Yeah. It's all the lights in here, but it looks it really is. good. Yeah, it's very fun. So we'll upload this as a remix because Pedro did shell it oh, out and add the highs. Yeah. So we'll have to do that a little yeah, bit so later. Using the 12 millimeter coin cell breakout board with the on and off switch for this. To make it nice and easy. And then- So I gotta kill the battery on this one. To build the Y uh, cable, you're using that one- um, No, I'm just using our, our regular uh, Haku oh. wire strippers. Okay. You just cut and then just kind of pull them apart mm, a little bit with your okay. fingers, just kind of massage them like that. And then you can get right in the middle of your wire so that way you can kind of splice right in between there as you can see there. Yeah. Definitely definitely a, a good way to, to make this type of, you know, connecting two things to power and ground and then have one cable come out into the breakout. Uh, Jim is saying that, yeah, the black lights could be fun inside there, the UV LEDs that we have. Yes. Uh, we have made some projects where we use a prep board to lay out an oh, arraignment yeah. of a bunch of UV LEDs mm -hmm. and stick them in there. A little so nail cure, cure, we did that. And then you yeah. did a, a brush uh, cleaner. Sanitizer, right, yeah. it's a bigger one, a makeup brush. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a 10 by 10, it's huge. Inches. And Jim is saying a, a how-to on how to shell out a mesh mixer. Oh, we my, actually yeah. just did one not too long ago, maybe about a month ago on the show. We mm -hmm. did do a little walkthrough of how I did the hollowing out of, I believe, the um, the pumpkin skull. Yeah, I'll find it okay. and post it on there, link you to Sweet. it. Yeah. There's a, a nice bunch of uh, tutorials on YouTube already, too. Mm -hmm. They may have updated their UI a little bit, but I think it's the same principles. It's about a month ago when we started doing these. Okay. I think in June yeah. when we started doing all that the That seems to be the trend. Projects. Yeah, that's <laughs> kind of like the trend is like to take uh, a solid 
sculpture, shell it out, add some LEDs to it, have a lot of fun. I wish a lot more channels would do that instead of just three printing and things. Add to the like, design oh. and, and add to add, the design. Actually add to it, modify it's it. It's definitely in, in, a thing to do. But mm -hmm. if you're looking at something to kind of crank out easily, then eh, it does take some time. Um, I mean, but, the skill is getting less and less on setting up a file to actually print and being more on actually modifying, adding things mm -hmm. to it. And MeshMix is a, is a great tool because it's free. It might not be open source, but uh, it is a free uh, app to download. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of resources and tutorials out there. So yeah, check it out. Yeah, it's whatever week we release the, I can actually go grab it real fast. Here's the it's this pumpkin page. skull is what we did the whole um, a little step-by-step -step walkthrough inside of Mesh Mixer during mm -hmm. the show. So whatever week this was, uh, the hangout, the live hangout uh, for that week, right. somewhere in the, um, I think it was in the community section is when I talk about all the hollowing out for all this. Super simple to do. Yeah, this was a little bit thicker too, so you can make it as thin yeah. as you want. Yeah, and I say during the live hangout also, uh, the correct setting to use, because I think I, I used a two millimeter shell on this one, yep. that's way too thick. Yeah, this is what, 1.5 or just 1? 1.4. Uh, 1. 1. 1.4. Actually, no, I think this was 1.8 or 1.6, and it's a huge difference in terms right. of... Turn it on. Let's have all our skulls on. Oh. <laughs> this one's a lot of detail. I really like that one. Yeah. This one is... It's got a this lot is just of plain old white it. ones, and we're using the 20 millimeter uh, coin cell yeah. breakout yeah. on this one. So we do have two different sizes for those, depending on what whoops, you need to power your project, what can fit and all that. So we'll definitely check those out. How much is the rectangular Qi charging antenna circuit? The receiver is 15 bucks. Yeah, so you wanna make sure you know the distinction. Yeah, this receiver will only rece uh, receive a wireless charge. Right. So you can't actually pump out. Yeah, this is um, a receiver, right? Yeah, so you're gonna need so it two, receives it. And then two things. The, the Qi transmitter is what is inside of Pedro's project, which is her last week. It's about mm -hmm. 27 bucks. Um, so you can pick that up too. And this one will transmit the power wirelessly to mm -hmm. a receiver like this. So they go hand in hand with each other. Yeah. We also have some other ones like the backpack, the jackets that, yeah. that plug into other devices, mm -hmm. like um, things like that. And if you didn't want to use this guy, you could. We also have a USB. Oh, uh, a as USB, well. micro USB. These little jacket things here. Actually, so we actually cool plugged this into the Circuit Playground, and that worked well. That that does work well, um, but you can't recharge the yeah, battery because right. it, it's just getting it from here. It's not actually. But if you're building like a project, like like an escape room, I always go back to like the the projects that John Park works on, where yeah. you want to have something powered when you go over something. Uh, definitely useful to have one of these because you can just hook this up to any yeah, micro it'll USB just turn device. On instantly, yeah. yeah. It'll just turn on. No battery. It's kind of neat. Straight that. Nah, whatever. You get the idea. Yeah, we should just add that. Way. I think I showed it on uh, Instagram as well. Mm -hmm. Just so plugging it. I'm just yeah. testing it. A lot it. of cool cheap uh, accessories and stuff that you can do in your projects. Mm -hmm. Yep. Super easy to modify anything to become wireless. Yep. Cool. Craig, if price is a thing, you can always source them out other places as well. Yeah. So you can do that too. Cool, but if you do want to help us out, make mist, get ten percent off. That'll that'll support all the people here. Yeah, continuing on to community makes, we got some. Yeah, other cool so that stuff. was the fancy skull. Check it out. We'll have a link below, um, and we'll upload the the remix mm -hmm. um, a little bit later today. All right, again. So back over to community makes. Um, we showed off the spooky eyes from team. Monkey Penny, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Continuing on that. So uh, super uh, cool. Little I really hope you come there. on. The, yeah, I really hope they come on the show and tell. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay, so let's take a look at some. And other you stuff. can grab the code also on the form for that. that yeah. We're using. Yeah, the code's right here. Actually, so cool. check that out. Yeah. I want to talk about Naomi. So Naomi Wu. Combining posted. wearables and three D printing. Yeah. In a very this is, awesome this way. This is funny. So, so you probably have seen this video. A lot of people have seen it. It's making the rounds. And look at this guy in the background. He's like so like <laughs> amazed that the portable 3D printing is here. The portable 3D printing is here. That's super cool. She gets on. She gets on the. She kind of takes a stroll around the city, meets up with a couple strangers and friends, talking about the technology, showcasing what she's doing with it, uh, and then she meets. Uh, she she goes over to uh, the the market, 
and Shenzhen and uh, looks at some pick and place machines. And it's just a lot, of, it's just a very fun video just to kind of see. Uh, it's like a in slice of life while carrying a wearable 3D printer on your back. Yeah, super so cool. So check out the video. We'll have it linked below if you haven't seen it already. And I am is always doing some awesome projects. Mm -hmm. and then check out, cool. subscribe. Yep. Another awesome maker is Liz from Blitz City DIY. So check it out. Last week she did a nice project on using the thermal camera with the Raspberry Pi, so check that out. Mm -hmm. This one's um, been making the rounds as well. Yeah, Super it's on cool. Hackster.io, I believe. And definitely subscribe to Liz's channel because it is a weekly, she's, she's popping one out every week. Mm -hmm. So you can always get like a cool video from her. And it actually drops, I think her schedule is on every Wednesday, which is cool because that's when we do the shows. So you can check out her channel and we'll have it linked below as well. Cool. Full detailed instruction yeah. guide. I, I haven't seen this yet, struggle. I want to see it. So it's a, it looks like a 14 minute video on comparing the SNES classic wow. hardware to, I guess, nice. other emulators like the Raspberry Pi. Mm -hmm. So take a look for that Check one. It out. Yep. This one comes from Chris Schmitz, who did a remix on the acrylic circuit Python sign. And he used a laser cutter and different materials to make this super cool multi layered, multi color scene. So you can use not just acrylic, but wood too to kind of block some of the light. And what he did was instead of orienting the strip long ways horizontally. He did it vertically so that you can get different colors to kind of uh, go and match with your scene. So for example, here has like the telescope in the front, which is in wood. And then in the back of that is another piece of wood, but this time the, the LED is shining at green. And far in the back is the acrylic, which is shining up in purple. So you can mash all these together and make this multi-layered. You get a little bit of depth in there. I even like the texture, the burnt texture on the on the wood. It gives you that kind of like shadow, um, shadow gradient. So it's very very neat. I didn't know you could do this um, with just one NeoPixel stick. I figured you would need different strips to kind of distribute the the layers and have them um, not blend with each other. But I think the way that he put this together is really cool. So check out this video from Chris. Um, it's on Vimeo, which I don't see a lot of people doing. But here's here's what it looks like when it's off. So you can see the different multi-layered effects. Oh, it looks like there's a pieces of acrylic for each piece here as well. Because that is what scatters and spreads the light. So very, very sweet looking uh, uh, scene here. And mm -hmm. the whole case is, is, is uh, laser cut. Uh, so definitely a lot better than CNC milling. But kind of the same circuit here, actually. Just mm -hmm. oriented again, uh, going long ways vertically instead of it being across horizontally. So nice very, combination very sweet. of uh, 3D yeah. printing, laser cutting. Yeah, I think it's cool to make these kind of scenes. And making it in a bigger scale, you can make this super amazing signage yes. that has a little bit of depth to it. Super cool project. This one is from Kyle Moore, who works uh, with DJ Tech Tools, which is an audio production um, magazine publication. And he basically took the super popular pocket operator, that's this little mini synth from this amazing company called Teenage Engineering, and he basically broke it out into this bigger, 24 millimeter arcade buttons, or they might be 30 millimeter arcade buttons. I don't know, but it's awesome. This is a really cool step-by-step uh, -step video. It's about 15 minutes long. So if you are into um, MIDI controllers, MIDI fighters, uh, the pocket operator, this is a really cool um, project, DIY project. And I actually helped out a little bit with the circuit. So um, Kyle is using our, the thing we're using here in this project, is the, uh, the five volt uh, micro lipo USB charger, uh, a three volt diode, and that is what prevents the five volts from blowing up the three volt uh, pocket operator. And then of course the lipo backpack here. Uh, but you can recharge it over the USB uh, port here. So you can recharge this micro lipo backpack. You never have to pop out those double A's for your pocket operator. Pretty cool, huh? Mm -hmm. So even if you're just looking for a way to make your device USB powered, this is a great circuit for doing that. Totally. Yeah. So check out Kyle Moore. He's also on Instagram. He does a lot of cool audio MIDI um, projects, mm -hmm. DIY projects. Super cool. Uh, one other thing I want to talk about is that he actually used 3D printed stencils um, to mark and cut away pieces the of wood. wood. Yeah. Oh, I wish I could find. You're, you're gonna have to watch the video, guys. So check out the video as he showcases that technique. I think it's a really good way to get um, a nice finish. Uh, to your projects, to using these these types of uh, wood materials mm -hmm. with a nice surface and stuff. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about is the Halloween contest from Instructables. It's still going on, 
and there's hundreds of entries and one of them that I saw because I like to just browse through the entries this is a life-size Lego Batman Batmobile look at this thing this thing is amazing I'm totally about <laughs> this has the he has that right isn't that awesome he's got the mini things <laughs> this thing is super cool it actually spews out like fog or mist mm -hmm. whatever it is it's smoke and it looks super awesome he walks through all the things that wow. he did to make this thing, using all, combining so, yeah. a lot of different disciplines, a lot of different techniques and materials to make a full life-sized prop. It's wow. amazing, yeah. This guy wins at Halloween. Look at this thing. <laughs> oh, which reminds me too. So you can actually cool. check on the accuracy of that. Look at what came in. No way! <laughs> hey. Oh, I, so I, we'll, we'll, we'll check out the accuracy look at this. of this. With, look at this surprise. I didn't know <laughs> that this that you ordered it. I'm so happy now. <laughs> I get something yeah, to do nice over the weekend. weekend build. Yeah. That kind of looks pretty it looks similar. Holy pretty I saw a review on this uh, not too long ago. I was pretty good. impressed with the uh, I like how and all he, that. he laid it out like just One the thing, front cover. One thing, I have a question. Can it do the parallel parking little <laughs> action? <laughs> Maybe. Feature that it can do there. Well, it has smoke. <laughs> it's something that the Lego can't do. <laughs> it's a huge guide. I haven't even scrolled through all of it. Look, you can see, you can fit inside. There's little kids oh, inside wow. there. That is amazing. Look, there's the fogger. Oh, that looks like what? the fogger we have. Pretty cool. Yeah. Looks like he tore it apart oh, to be able man, to fit it the inside lights. there. Let's get in there. He's <laughs> not happy. Yeah, Gavin would freak out if we built something this huge. Yeah, when are we going to build something huge? <laughs> Takes up the whole uh, backyard. Pretty cool. All right, so anyway, check out the Halloween contest <laughs> and, and vote for, for this man. <laughs> Can't wait for the weekend now, huh? Vote for this man. He <laughs> wins the internet. Sorry, I was, I was on the wrong thing. I was, I was scrolling through his page. I'll have a link below, of course, but check a look. Just kind of browse through the step-by-step the, the, the -step guide as it is a long journey to make something this nice and big. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, that is all the... Oh, no, we have one more. I forgot. Don't forget Discord. We got the Discord going on. This one... It's from Sigafoos first. We got a couple here. That's so let me, cool. let me battle with Windows here for a second. This one. Excellent. So let's jump into the uh, Discord universe and check out Sigafoos' project. I don't know what it is yet, but he's going to show it off on Show and Tell tonight. And I'm looking forward to finding out. This is a very interesting. Uh, I, I love anything with buttons and joysticks. And this is a, two joysticks and four buttons. I don't know what it is. I, I want to know. So Sigafos, shout out to Sigafos. Uh, he works with us on CircuitPython. He's a CircuitPython helper. So if you're looking for help and stuff with CircuitPython, check him out. Scrolling down, we have some cool progress from Cyborg Supergirl, who is working on a cast of her head. And it looks like she's, she's kind of templating out uh, maybe uh, some sort of helmet or something that she's going to fabricate. And we have uh, Roberto, who has a put the button on backwards. Hopefully he can get a pin, a Sparky pin for that one. We have some shared stuff here. People like to share other people's work as well. Send me automatic railgun that looks dangerously deadly. This looks cool. And we have, uh, oh, this looks really cool. This is a, probably a prop of sorts with a, maybe some RGB LEDs inside there. Yeah, two rings and a Gemma M0. That looks really cool. Man, that is cool. Did he fabricate all that? Wow. That's dope. I love that like recess thing. It reminds mm -hmm. me of the... Like like that on case or something. Grill <laughs> yeah, that's really super cool. Very, very cool. Again, join the the, um, the Discord chat room to get a lot of cool project ideas and project help as well. And whoa, look at this! <laughs> look at this! Uh, <laughs> this fail. I love this. Those are, those are always good. Um, we have a sad kitty cat. And this is some. Uh, yeah, here we go. This is uh, Azure Skies doing some progress, paint jobs and stuff to his Nerf mod. Cool. Very cool. So make sure you join us in the Discord chat room as uh, we tend to chat there af after the show and stuff. So that's Discord. And that's really the show. So thank you guys so much. Uh, we'll do Q&A right now. Did I miss anything? Uh, Olaski wants to know about the links. All the links that you see for all the shows are yeah, always down posted. below. I'm starting to get better at uh, putting them during the show. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can check this out. I think, uh, they are in the description. They will be, yeah. yeah. I haven't put them in there yet, but right after the show, I, I grab all the tabs and then I think they're updated, yeah. yeah. So just wait a little bit. And with that, that is pretty much the show. Can you get rid of this advertisement for Lego? <laughs> <laughs> a 
Okay, so. What else we got? Hey, guess uh, what's on tonight? I know yeah. what I'm watching tonight. Show and tell, Show and, tell. and ask an engineer. That's right. 7.30 and okay. at 8 o'clock. Right after, we'll right be after. on Show and Tell, as we are every week. Showing yeah. off this week's projects. And of course, you can come on, join us. All the instructions for that are in a blog post, actually, on blog.ifrit.com. If you want to know how to join Show and Tell, you can also get a link right inside of the Discord chat. You can go to the channel for Show and Tell, and there's instructions right on the welcome um, little banner for that. And you can ask anybody in the room there. They will be happy to help you out. Send you the link for that right around 7.30. And that is Eastern Standard Time. Be there or be dead. <laughs> and then right after that at 8 o'clock, we get to uh, check out Ask an Engineer. Full hour with Phil and Lamar. Going yep. over all the new products. All of the new secret stuff that everybody's secret. working on. Super secret. So don't miss out on that. And then tomorrow at, I believe, 4 p.m. Is it 3 uh, or 4? Maybe 4. 3 or 4 p.m. It is John I think Park's 4 workshop. p.m. Eastern Time. 1 p.m. Central? Mm -hmm. No, Pacific. Yeah, always working on some really cool stuff, so don't forget to check mm -hmm. that out. Yeah, last week you did a really cool uh, Screaming Cauldron. So you can combine mm -hmm. that with this project. Mm -hmm. So you can have a Screaming Cauldron that spews yeah. out smoke. The somehow. sensors fit perfectly inside the right. nose there. Yeah, I think, uh, like I was saying, yeah, I was really tempted to do that, to put the, the proximity sensor right here. There's so and much then you two can. NeoPixel <laughs> jewels right here in the eyes. There's so much So space. much cool stuff you can yeah. do with it. You got about two weeks left, so you got to get started on it. This weekend, make sure you hunker down in your garage and bring the family and be like, hey, we're going to build this thing together. It's fun. Cool. Science. <laughs> yes, it is for Eastern Standard Time for John. That's right. And the last programming note, we do the show on Wednesdays, not Thursdays, Wednesdays at 11 a.m. Eastern mm -hmm. Time. And the next thing is to switch out that graphic. <laughs> yeah. No, I did. See? I just have it there because it used to be Thursday. This uh, is the new graphic. See? And you want to do a recap? And this week we checked out some of the cool... Wait, what did we... What did we do? What did we do? We, we were trying to do this recap. We didn't even know what we did. So, so this week we, we took did a this look week, at yeah. modifying a skull to add a fusion or the fusion inside here. The fusion. The fusion. All right, let me try. Humidifier. <laughs> so this week we took a look at modifying a skull, adding a sort of playground glowy and some fog mister on the inside. We also looked at wireless charging circuit playground. We took a look at my upcoming. Uh, little Gordon Cole MP3 player from Twin Peaks. That's right. Check that out. Super cool circuit from uh, Carter Nelson. Mm -hmm. And then we also took a look at how to do wireless charging yep. with the circuit playground. That's right. We looked at uh, Time Lapse Tuesday, how to use a coin cell breakout and wire up LEDs to add it to your 3D printed props for Halloween or whatever. Mm -hmm. We answered some questions. We looked at things, a lot of great community projects. How's that for a recap? Here you go. I think it worked. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We'll see you again tonight at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We hope you see you there. And we're going to end the show with the intro. Is that good? Bye, right, everybody.